A circumflex euros drawing T R E E S A circumflex euros. Please feel free to pause the video while you're trying to draw. Get the latest. Do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell. Enjoy the vision. Introduction. Having decided to learn how to draw trees or improve your existing skills, you will want to make last progress. It is the aim of this book to help you succeed at this. You will be shown in easy stages how to draw trees to a high standard and to a high level of satisfaction. Trees are as individual as people and must therefore be approached as such by the artist. Drawing trees for enjoyment or making finished works has its advantages because all the endless supply of models available. Trees, shrubs and hay, variety of foliage are in plentiful supply most of the time, almost regardless of where you live. You can observe them at close quarters or from afar with or without their leaves, seeds and fruits, photographs, magazines and hooks, as well as television. Programs are also useful sources of information. Tis no coincidence are the most proficient. Artists are those who draw Olten and persistently. It is this frequent practice that will most rapidly develop your ability. You will learn how to organize your tree drawing in terms of shape, form, and texture and how to introduce variety into your drawings through the skillful use of line and tone. Just as importantly, practice will aid the development of your all-round drawing skills and add to your progress as a developing artist. In leaning from this book, you may initially adopt my methods, but please always try to make time to experiment for yourself. This will help you to develop your own approach and allow your own unique style to emerge. Success is within anyone's reach. Your rewards will soon come ill you make a determined and consistent effort. Do not concern yourself with how long your drawings take, but with what you achieve and lean with each one. Art is not instant. Good luck, a magnificent tree in full leaf. materials. There is nothing worse than buying expensive paper and pencils and being too inhibited to use them thinking that your efforts will not do them justice. This becomes a stumbling block to progress and certainly spoils the enjoyment you should otherwise feel. If you think that this may be you, T suggests starting with photocopier paper or an economy sketch bit and a black ballpoint pen or 2B pencil. All the initial exercises can be done with this minimum of equipment. You will benefit considerably by the positive approach required when using a simple ballpoint pen in particular, since this removes the option of rubbing out errors. As you progress you will need salt pencils, grades 2B, 48 and 6B, a pretty eraser, craft knife, an A4, pad of 80 GSM drawing paper, Heavyweight 220 GSM carriage, paper, watercolor paper, a paper, rubbing stump and a plastic eraser. Pencils are best sharpened to a long point using a crawled knife for use on their side or to lay down broad areas of tone. The value of a kneadable putty eraser is that you can take it, rum its wrapper and break off about a third and work it between your fingers until itis salt and pliable. Each time you use it, re-knead it so that you always have a clean surface to work with. These erasers do eventually get to the point where they carry too much removed graphite and start to smudge. Discard the piece and knead another ready for use. The art gum or modern plastic eraser can be cut into strips and sharpened like a pencil for detailed use. These erasers can also be used for making marks in your drawing and are not restricted to removing errors. An impressing tool is used to impress grooves in the paper, which you can then tone over with a pencil, leaving fine lines clear. Save small pieces of clean, plain paper and card to experiment on. Make a mental note of the various surface textures and the effects achieved on them for future use in your drawings. 
Materials for sketching outdoors. When drawing outside, I always have elastic bands to keep the pages of my sketchbed from blowing over. T also have pieces of photocopier paper cut to my sketchbook size wo place between the most recent pages used to prevent the drawings from pressing all on to facing pages. 11 a.m. sketching with a ballpoint pen. Also have a piece of paper tissue to wipe the point when the ink builds up on it. This can otherwise be deposited onto the drawing as a blob. All the equipment you will need for drawing trees, elastic bands for sketching outdoors, a craft knife for sharpening pencils, a paper rubbing, stump tortillon, pencils, an impressing lule, a clutch pencil with a small nail held in eye putty and plastic, erasers, paper tissue for wiping, ballpoint pens, tracing paper, paper, and sketch bids. Tips and techniques. Sharpen your pencils to a long point using a sharp craft knife. Harder pencils generally give lighter tones, and softer grade give darker tones. Much depends on the amount of pressure you use. Always have a piece of clean scrap paper under your drawing hand to keep your work clean. Make sure you lift, rather than slide it to a new position to avoid smudging. After sharpening a pencil, stricky it on a piece of scrap paper to smooth the working side or end, ensuring that you get the mark you want when you begin your drawing. Repeat this process every time you pick up a pencil to resume drawing. Using a gentile circular motion with the side of the pencil will pick up the paper, gain to produce various textural effect. The example above was done on a not surface watercolor paper, impressing grooves into the paper with a fingernail or impressing tool. Always you to tone over with pencil, leaving delicate lines clear. Lay down an area of tone, then use a rubbing stump or delon to spread and Smooth out the pencil marks. Mold your putty eraser to a point or flat edge and use it to draw fine lines into areas of tone. A dabbing motion will delicately lift tones. Do not let too much graphite build up on the eraser before remolding to make clean edge. Ballpoint pen techniques. The familiar ballpoint pen is excellent for sketching work, not being Able to remove errors will make you more positive in your drawing. Use some plain photocopier paper 10 do some simple mouths. Remove excess ink from around the ball frequently using paper tissue. Test the range of tones possible with a ballpoint pen. Start very lightly and gradually build up pressure, making the lines closer together as you progress. Try these tests low see how well your pen reacts. There should be little sign of blobbing at the high points of the curves. Make up your own bark textures with horizontal or vertical shading. Overlaying light marks with heavier ones produces three tones with the white of the paper. Getting started. Consider all drawing as a process all making marks. These marks should be designed or arranged to give the viewer of the work the illusion thar they are. Looking at a three-dimensional image, concentrate on getting some variety into the marks and lines you produce. This is where sketching is so useful. Genuine sketching will help you achieve nice, loose line work because you can experiment and enjoy the sheer pleasure all looking and learning. You do not have to show your early alerts to anyone unless you want to keep all your Work, as it will motivate you when you see evidence of progress, it may also encourage you to examine your mistakes and seek ways of correcting them. Try these simple examples for yourself and see what variety you can get into. Your line work, a constant line will give a flat looking drawing, an accented and varied line gives the drawing a much more interesting, livelier feel. Using a soft pencil creates you softer and more broken, accented and varied line. Proportions and angles. Illinois is not usually critical to draw the exact proportions of any given tree. However, you can improve the accuracy of your drawing by using a method known as measured drawing. I do this as follows. With my arm out straight, one eye closed and holding my pencil horizontally, I use it to gauge the width of the 
Whole tree, retaining this gauged reference, from tip of pencil to thumb, I now thumb it vertical to compare it with the height of the tree. If the height and width are similar, I lightly draw a square on my paper to the required size where I want my finished tree to be. In other cases where the width and height differ, I draw a rectangle to the correct proportions, upright or on its side. My tree will now I it inside this shape and be placed to suit my composition. I now consider the trunk of the Wii. I gauge the width as before. This reference may now be used to approximate the relative proportion of any other feature, such as how far up an intersection of branches occurs. These other features will then be one three or however many times the size of the trunk. Using these approximate measurements, I make light marks on my paper. This helps me to check that the drawing will fit into my overall shape. Now I make light guidelines to indicate the angles of the branches. I align my pencil with one eye shut and arm outstretched along the branch or trunk in front of me and carefully ranster this angle to the drawing. I note where the branch angle crosses other points on the re and check this with either comparative, measurements or angles, or both if it is important, enough. When I feel that I have enough, guide marks and angled, lines, I begin drawing. The me proper, I, continue this checking, process until tam I, satisfied with my outline, drawing, I do not add, first, remove any, incorrect lines but use, them as a guide to place, a more accurate line, only then is the inaccurate line erased. This measured drawing shows how T have used the width of the tree's trunk as a guide to the proportions of the whole tree. Have also noted the angles of the branches, shape, form, and texture. Another organized way of working through your drawing is to go through shape, form, and texture steps. Students or beginners, Olin tend to see the most obvious features first, and draw these in woe early. In the process, shape. Start by looking carefully at the shape or outline only. Spend time setting this down as accurately as you can. Begin by making small marks or the height and width of the subject at various points. Checking the proportions by measured drawing, see page 13, and marking where the tree shape changes occur. This needs to be done lightly or first, making any corrections beller using bolder line work. Use the point of the 2B pencil. Trees and other objects do not really have lines around them. It is a drawing convention to put these in R, the outset, but the lines will need to be lost in the finished drawing form. I next look very carefully for the change in general. Form, lights and darks. The form is shown by the tall of light. Indicate the shadow areas with the application of tone. Start lightly before making strong marks to make any subsequent changes easier. Large internal features may be put in at this stage, such as the part hollow in this wee trunk. Use the sight all a 2B pencil for initial work, follow by the sight of a 4B pencil for darker tones. Texture. When I have established both the shape and form to my satisfaction, the texture may be added. The surface marks thar indicate the tree's smoothness or roughness. The tonal value of these textural marks will largely follow the general tone of the wonk area on which they appear. Looking carefully at textural, marks will often reveal that they appear larger and earther apart on the surface nearer to the viewer and closer together as they disappear around the sides of the me -unk. Good observation here will add greatly to the reality of your drawing. Use both 4B and 6B pencils on their points and sides to obtain rich darks. Sketching. Use a pocket size 6 x 4 inches 15% x 10 centimeters sketchbook and a 4B pencil or black ballpoint pen. Using a pen may seem intimidating, but will make you look and think more before you put marks down. Whether you begin with pen or pencil, put your initial marks and lines down lightly and loosely as a guide only. Use these 
to help you position more accurate marks and lines gradually. Make your marks more positive as your sketch develops. When you are serestied with this structure, you can build up a variety of tones. To give the effect of light and dark, try sketching trees with the light coming from one side. This will help you to see the tonal changes across the subject. I often sketch the same tree many times, but I still see more each time. The more you see, the better your drawings and sketches will become. It is as much the postation of the lights and darks as the actual contours of the tree parts that tells the viewer where the branches come from and go to. The use of tone also indicates where they are in space relative to each other. This is my initial ballpoint pen. Sketch draw the drawing on pages 18 to 19. Try to record enough information to enable you to expand your sketch into a finished drawing at d later date quick sketches like these two can be achieved by using a textured watercolor paper and the sight of a soft pencil start by observing the proportions of the tree and making some appropriate guide lines then lay a middle tone over the whole area of the tree picking up the paper texture and leaving some spaces or sky holes in the foliage area through half closed eyes look for the main dark areas in the tree and reinforce these by using heavier pressure but still using the sight of your pencil. Now look for any really light areas and using your putty eraser remove tone to suit. Keep doing this until you build up a broad pattern of lights and darks that suggest the tree form. Look for branches going through any gaps in the foliage and purr these in as silhouettes with the point of your pencil. The trunk is usually in shade if only partal from the overhead foliage and will show dark. The top area of a T usually appears dark due to the fact that you are looking are the underside of the leaf masses but the light source is from above. Drawing bare trees and branches. This pencil drawing was done using one of my ballpoint pen sketches. As a reference, see page 16. The fact that the drawing is much larger than the sketch means that there is more space to fill, so you need more detail and textural information. Much practice and regular observation of bare trees and their details will help you to get to this point in your progress. You will develop a store of remembered features to help you create missing information in a drawing. A range of subtle changes in tone will be required to form features such as these. Note that no lines are left visible. I sometimes change the actual pattern of light against dark if. This helps the viewer to understand more clearly what is happening. These overlapping branches might have looked more uniform in tone, but I have exaggerated the contrasts in order to show where one branch passes in front of another. Split Bowl Oak in Winter, 330x 260mm 13x 10% in. Bark Textures, there may not be many situations where detailed bark rendering is called for, but it can be quite eye-catching if used on a major tree in the foreground of a drawing. Er will also prove to be a worthwhile learning and skill improving exercise. London Plain Bark. The London Plain tree has quite a smooth bark, light gray in color. It sheds thin flakes to reveal light patches of yellowish green underbark. Subtle rendering is required to show this Harkwell, mostly sight of pencil work using a range of pencil grades. Silver Birch Bark. One of the most commonly recognized trees in winter or summer. The mature specimens have a warm white bark which contrasts with the deep black fissures that develop. This makes a goad contrast in tones for a dramatic pencil. Drawing silver birches make excellent trees for the foreground where you can show the back texture to good effect. For this one you can really try out your different pencil pressures to create the contrast in tone. Note that the dark Areas have a range of darks, and light areas have a range of lights. If you do not reflect this, your drawing will look flat. Weeping Willow Bark. 
This bark is gray-brown, sometimes showing deep or regular-shaped fissures with fairly flat airs in between. It is very varied and a difficult bark to show well, but worth the practice. You will need to use lots of sight and end of pencil work. Leaves and seeds. Oak leaves and acorn. For this drawing, some freshly found oak leaves with an acorn attached were placed onto a sheet of white paper. When drawing this type of subject, any unwanted leaves or stalks can be removed to improve the composition. In this case I wanted to work towards a clean, sharp, edge drawing, so I decided not to include any cast shadows. Begin by looking at the proportions of your metal. This one is approximately square. Before starting to draw, remember to psych the pencil on a piece of scrap paper to form an edge or side that will make the marks you want. You will need a long, flat surface on the side of the letter general. Toning or a flat on the tip for a more specific size of mark. You will need pencils. 2B, 4B, and 6B. Putty eraser. Paper rubbing stump. Heavyweight cartridge paper. Scrap paper. Impressing tool. A clutch pencil. With a nail in it. 1. Using the 2B pencil. Begin by lightly blocking in the external shape. Place some guidelines for the angles of the central veins in each leal spend enough time to ensure a good foundation for your drawing as always use a piece of scrap paper under your drawing hand to keep your work clean Two, check the proportions and angles one more time using the same measured drawing method that you would use for a whole tree see page 13 then start to make an accurate outline drawing of the leaves and the echo, alterations to the outline drawing are made by making corrections before removing unwanted lines. 3. While you are working on the outline drawing, you need to give attention to both positive and negative shapes shown in red and blue respectively. This will help to make your drawing more accurate. The leal veining can then be drawn in lightly. 4. Using the impressing tool, follow the veining lines, applying pressure to impress a groove with the side end of the nail. It is important to do some pre-tiles on identical paper to judge the depth and pressure required as you do not want to damage your drawing at this stage. 5. After the vein lines have been impressed, remove the guide lines with a putty eraser pinched at the end to get down into the impressed groove. 6. Sharpen the 2B pencil to a long point. Use this with the lead flat to the paper to tone over the impressed grooves. Make sure that the graphite of the pencil does not touch the impressed lines. Tone over whole leaf areas, leaving the impressed grooves white. TF you work lightly, you will also pick up the texture of the paper. 7. Use the three grades of pencil to give a variety of tones. Over the leaves, darker tones help to show where the leaves overlap or where the leaf edges turn away from the light. 8. To make the acorn look smooth, apply a light tone with the 2B pencil and then mub this in one direction with the rubbing stump. Make the acorn darker at the outside edges and lighter in the center, to make the highlight areas, squeeze the putty eraser to the width of the required highlight and use single strokes to remove some pencil work. Strengthen the tones either side of the highlights with a 4B pencil. The sharp tip of the 4B pencil should also be used on the patterned leaf at bottom left to create the raised textured effect. 9. To make the acorn cup look textured and round, draw small, circular marks at the edges and larger circular marks around the center of the cup. Vary these in thickness and density to give variety. Apply varying tones between these marks. Lift highlights with a pointed putty. Eraser where required. Oak leaves and acorn. 180 x 190 millimeters. 7 x 74 inches. At the final stage, work over the whole drawing, 
increasing tones with the 6B pencil, and lightening where required with the putty eraser. When the drawing is complete, clean around the edges and any other areas that require ill. Using your poly eraser, the finished drawing can now be signed and framed. Alternatively, it can be stored. After lightly spraying with a fixative, ash leaves and seeds. 203 x 152 millimeters, 8 x 6 inches. Smaller foliage samples like these can be placed on a white plate and sealed in with plastic food wrap to slow down any drying out and curling up while you draw. Good. Observation is the key to improving your drawing skills. Spanish Sweet Chestnut 180x 203mm, 7x 8 inches. This drawing was done on plain photocopier paper. Did not, therefore, use an impressing tool for the veins I simply drew round them. This is not as difficult as it just appears. TT helps you to build up to the task of drawing those spiky nutshells, which are achieved by drawing darks around where you want light spikes to show. Light and Shade Lombardi Poplars This tree's tall, elegant shape is useful in landscape drawings as it links into the sky space and balances out horizontals in the composition. Two trees together and overlapping give the opportunity to use contrasting tones of light against dark against light. Make a point of observing trees in a strong side light. This will help you to grasp this important principle. I planned this drawing using the sketches shown below, considering the elements of composition, shape and tone that are all part of the process of designing a picture. To introduce variety and interest, I mace the two trees different in height, with one of them in front of a hedge and the other growing up through it. I had same photographs of other Lombardi poplars for texture reference. A drawing like this one will take some hours to complete, so the main body of the work is always done back in the studio. I did not usually draw any one tree or group of trees on site for more than a couple of hours at a time as the changing light alters the light and dark patterns of trees too much. This is where sketching becomes most helpful since you can get quite a lot of information down on paper in a relatively short time. You will need 2B, 4B, 6B and 8B pencils, putty eraser, heavyweight cartridge paper, scrap paper. In planning your composition, it helps to balance the verticals and horizontals. Tail trees like poplars are useful for this. Reason in a landscape drawing, two trees together create an interesting variety of shapes. Look jor the play of light. Overlapping. Trees creel contrasts of light against dark and dark against light. 1. With a sharp 2B pencil, make a series of squiggles and dots to indicate the general shape and placement of the whale composition. Include some space for a little foreground work. Once you are happy with the shape and size of the drawing, add some general toning to suggest form in the direction of the light. Mark in where the branches are going to be, too. Lay in more tone to indicate further form. With the cycle of the 2B pencil, the texture of the paper, grain can remain as it almost looks like foliage. Work over the areas that will eventually be darker too. Gain a feel for furthering the form before making final marks. Refine the branches. 3. Make a good fat on the side end of the 2B pencil and lay in some heavier tones to divide the area between the two trees. Apply similar toning to the dark areas unclear the trees and around the bowl of the tree in front. 4. Using the 4B pencil with a flat on the tip work. Some darker tones to further divide the large leaf masses. Notice that the tones are mainly laid down as marks, not as solid filled in areas. 5. Use the 4B pencil to darken the hedge under the main tree around the bowl. Render the fluting on the bowl and indicate a cast shadow at an angle across it. Further wrinkler the left hand tree and hedgerow with the same pencil. With the sight of the 2B pencil, make some marks on the foreground area to indicate undulations in the field. 
6. Lift areas of tone using a putty eraser if required. To vary the shape and size of the leaf masses, note, the larger leaf masses on the most prominent tree. 7. Using some scrap paper, work a small flat on the end of your 6B pencil. Use this to make some darker tones within the previously made tonal areas. As you use this soft pencil, the flat will get larger. Do not let it get too large before reforming it. 8. Establish the darkest area around the right hand tree bowl to help accentuate the features of fluting and cast shadow. This is the light against dark against light principle, which creates interest and drama. 9. Using the 4B, 6B and 8B pencils further establish the lights and darks of the main trees large leaf masses lift areas with the putty eraser where required continue working in this way to near completion 10 work some detail into the rest of the hedge add some stray branches at the right hand side of the hedge introduce some more foreground marks put the drawing aside lore a while before looking it over for any further Corrections that may need attention. Work to completion. Lombardi Poplars. 180x240 mm, 7x9a circumflex 1 half in. Once you have mastered the light against dark principle, you will not have any trouble drawing trees in pairs like this or in groups. Weeping Willow. 280x265 mm, 11x10a circumflex 1 half in. I find these difficult trees to draw, perhaps because I H E T V E N A circumflex euros t practiced as much as I have with other trees. Do not be put off if you need a few attempts before you are satisfied with your efforts. The Edge of Poplar Woods, 195x215 mm, 7 3 fourths x 8 1 half in. This drawing was very time consuming but worthwhile. Again, it is. The dark tones that give the impression of light in the drawing. Contrasts in scale. Sequoia. A different approach was needed for this very tall tree, known in some parts of the world as Wellingtonia. A detailed rendering would have taken many hours, so I sketched it first and completed it in the studio. As the sun moves around, it lights trees from different directions, and this constantly changes the lights and darks that are so essential to the observation process required to draw a tree. Standing in a position where the lighting was to my advantage, I took some photographs of the top and bottom halves of the tree. Rather than attempting to fit the whole tree in one frame, this allowed me to get close enough to record the features required or a detailed drawing. I will show how to render this tall, slender tree in three sections. From top to bottom, the marks used to create form and texture will be increased in size in each section down the tree to give the impression. All the lower section being nearer to the viewer than the top, you will need pencils, 2B, 4B, and 6B, cartridge paper, putty eraser, I joined two photographs in order to have a detailed enough reference source for this drawing. Photographs should be used as reference drawer things you don't recall rather than low copy. I tend to choose the bits like and use them where T think best. Also deal a ballpoint pen sketch of the tree shown above. 1. Make faint marks with a 2B pencil to indicate the tree shape and major groups of foliage. Do not use continuous lines at this stage as i find them restrictive and they only need to be removed later two the light source comes rom above right so the left side and underneath of the foliage masses will be darker and the left hand side of the tree will look the darkest with this in mind start making marks with the end of a 2b pencil a variety of dots squiggles and blotches. The marks in this first section will all be of a similar size, but their density will vary in order to build up a pattern of lights and darks. Resharpen your pencil when it wears down, or the marks will keep getting larger. Branches are 
usually seen through the holes in the foliage which also casts shadows on them. Mark these in with your 2B pencil. Use the shaped putty eraser in a dabbing motion to lighten areas. Darken some of the underneath areas with the 4B pencil. 3. Using the same mark making technique but with a slightly larger flat on the end of your 2B pencil. Work the second section along with the larger marks. Make the clumps of foliage a little larger. The thick twisted trunk showing in this section will have light and dark areas on it. Use your 4B and 6B pencils to get good contrast in its shadow areas. The darkest areas should be worked with the 4B and 6B pencils. 4. In the third section make the marks foliage, masses in light and dark areas even larger. This makes each part of the tree look as though it is getting nearer as your eye moves down it. Render the dark shadow and fluting on the monk with a 6B pencil. Use the 2B and 4B pencils lightly on their sides to finish the background foliage. Sequoia 190x 275mm 7 1 half x 10 3 fourths in. After working the three sections from top to bottom, work all over the drawing for the final effect. Work the light and dark areas as required to complete the impression that the light is coming from above right. Use the pulte eraser to lighten areas by dabbing it rather than rubbing since this tends to smudge soft grade pencils. Tree with fungus. 185 x 290 mm 7 1 4 x 11 1 half in. A drawing like this does not present the same perspective problems as the one opposite, but many of the challenges are the same whether depicting a whole large tree just a section of a small tree. The drawing should contain enough information in the form of marks and the variety of tones to retain the viewer's interest, the individual, marks can be quite abstract, but as a whole they can strongly suggest reality. The initial sketches for this drawing were done in an arboretum in Wales, as with the much larger scale sequoia, drawing, photographic reference was used because of the length of time it takes to complete a work with this amount of detail, trees in the landscape, bankside birches. Landscape drawing will sometimes involve capturing tree reflections. In gently moving water, reflections can break into all kinds of abstract, fragmented shapes. The distance that a reflection extends below the waterline can be taken as equal to the height of that object above the waterline. The size of object and reflection can be taken as equal. However, the reflection may be carried further by water movement. You will need pencils, 2B and 4B, putty eraser, heavyweight cartridge paper, tracing paper, paper rubbing stump, scrap paper. 1. Using the 2B pencil, lightly, mark out the proportions and placement of the landscape, features, progress the landscape, area to a fairly complete state by carefully placing a variety of tonal marks using a 4B pencil. Reinforce and lift tones as required. Only alter you are fairly satisfied with this step should you consider working the water and reflections. 2. Use your pencil as a gauge to mark the lengths of the reflections below the waterline using short vertical strokes with the sight of your 2B pencil. Start laying in some broad areas of light tone for the reflections. 3. Continue with short strokes of the 2B pencil, noting carefully that where the actual tree branches grow upwards, their reflections will go downwards. If this is initially a problem, use some tracing paper to trace a rough outline of the trees. 4. Turn the tracing upside down and use it as a guide only to check your drawing of the reflection. 5. Now put in dot some of the carer tones with Six. Continue with the 2B and 48 pencils, adding tone to give a stronger reflection. Then, using a putty eraser pinch to a thin edge, remove some 
areas of tone at the far edge of the water, work in the same direction as the ripple marks. Increase the width of the removed areas as you come forward in the picture. Note that parts of the reflections are carried away along the line of the ripples. 7. Using your 4B pencil with a small flat on its end, apply some further tone to the front edge of the areas that you previously cleared with the putty eraser. This will add depth to the ripples. 8. With the rubbing, stump gently smudge some pencil marks to hide the grain of the paper, adding another texture to the water. Surface continue, adding and removing areas of tone, making these features more prominent by means of size and contrast the nearer you move towards the foreground opposite bankside birches 210 x 297 millimeters 8 1 4 x 11 3 4 in the drawing merely creates an impression of the scene for riagar water the reflections would even more fragmented whereas for smoother water the reflection would show more detail, almost like a mirror image. Tree roots. 350 x 285 millimeters, 13 3 fourths x 11 1 fourth in. This landscape drawing is on a different scale and contains more detail of an individual tree. Only where the water has washed away the soil will roots be exposed as they were here by the bank of a dried up or diverted river.